George Zell and the Cleveland Orchestra, uh, leading the performance there of Dvorak's New World Symphony No. 9, which, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be one of the feature pieces uh, in the 2014-2015 season with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. And uh, right next to me here this morning, I have a very special guest, Alexander Micklethwaite, the music director of the Winnipeg Symphony, and we're going to uh, chat now just about uh, the season coming up. Good morning, Alexander. Good morning, Michael. How are you this morning? Very good. Congratulations to your new job. Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations to you on announcing the brand new season. Thank you. Which is, uh, again, it just looks like a phenomenally exciting season. I know, it's actually the, it's historic because we never launched so early, last weekend, you know, in the middle of February, basically. Um, so it's we're never too proud. early. Never too early. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you got it all together early got this it all year. All together early, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's. I think let's first of all let's touch on some of the on the <coughs> you know, obvious highlights. But I also wanted to uh, once we've done that, I think we're going to what we're going to do this morning is uncover some of the hidden gems right. that the symphony is going to be doing next year that people may not be as familiar with. So touch upon some of the highlights that you think are very important to. Uh, well, that might be might collide though the gems with the highlights, you yeah, know, that's a, that's with my okay. personal highlights. <laughs> yes. So well, I mean the 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 obvious ones, I guess. First of all, from our returning artists, um, some of you out there might remember. I think it was two years ago, we had um, Natasha Peremsky jump in for. Uh, Yuja Wang, a pianist, and Natasha Peremsky, Russian pianist, actually blew everybody away. It was um, just one of those magical evenings. Um, and so she is coming back. She is opening this coming season in September with, um, well, with actually a real fun concerto, Gershwin's Piano Concerto, mm-hmm. So, um, which fits really well to her personality also. Um we are opening that concert, by the way, with Copeland's Canticle of Freedom. Um, so, in a way, it's kind of this American program with Copeland and then Gershwin, and we'll finish with uh, the Dvorak New World Symphony, which is, on the one hand, Czech, you know, but he wrote it in North America, mm-hmm. in, in America. And the Canticle of Freedom, which is now going into the hidden gems <laughs> territory <laughs> already, but already. I have to mention That's it. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go with um, the flow. <laughs> is uh, because we have this overall red thread of, um, well, of music associated with the Human Rights Museum or human rights in general. So Canticle of Freedom, we kind of wanted to st- start with a big statement of that, and this is why we have yeah, this piece. Yeah, I think it's important to mention the human rights element because you know, looking at the program, it may not seem obvious at first, but there yeah. is that element running through a lot of the different Yeah pieces as well yeah well th- so natasha Peremsky, one big one for me um obvious one the other w- obvious one we are finishing this next season with nobuyuki tsuji mm-hmm. our um not our but the gentleman the pianist who came also two years ago and who is blind by birth and um he i mean i don't know how to explain it he was just it's it's a miracle literally that he is when you see him and hear him perform, mm-hmm. because everything he has to learn by l- listening to one hand of his teacher and then slowly making his way around. I mean, it's quite remarkable, um, literally, mm-hmm. you know. Well, and he's been in high demand, I mean, and all over the world. In he's very been, high demand, yeah. yes. So we um, decided this time to give him Beethoven's Emperor Concerto, which is Fantastic. like the imminent well, work for piano in a way classical work um so we have those bookends and other highlights i guess is uh, is, uh we have the messiah back elgar's um, cello concerto elgar cello concerto mm-hmm. is a is a big one yeah um so it they are on, and that uh jean lamont well jean lamont well. that's going to be fantastic is a highlight yes it, for us Baroque it's actually feast. For us, it's, it's a first it's a little bit like both a hidden gem and a highlight because mm-hmm. some of you might be familiar with Baroque and the fact that Tafel music, um, well, catapulted itself really to the world scene. And Jean Lamont is the leader of that group, leading meaning in this case, she's not per se a conductor. She actually plays the violin, Mm -hmm. it's standing in front of them the way um, Baroque music was performed 250 years ago and um, or even classical music then to that extent. So we never did this before. We never had actually a 
real Baroque specialist also dig into this playing style then of that time and not conducting, not conducting with a baton, but actually her, her standing then in front of the orchestra, leading by playing the violin. And that'll and be with a full orchestra. Well, it will be. Well, in this case, it will be not. Good question. We she will go also to the size of that time, and in those time, I mean, yeah, in like two hundred fifty years, two hundred seventy years ago. Um, well, they were every size, I guess, existed, but it was more normal to have, like, let's say, eight first violins mm -hmm. and um, or two double basses only, um, because many of those pieces were p um, performed at a court, and uh, it was the private orchestra of a um, duke of a, mm -hmm. um, you know, or at the emperor or something. So the orchestra was often larger than the audience, an audience of five or six. <laughs> Maybe, exactly. They were dining. <laughs> yeah. And the servants were performing. <laughs> exactly. That would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> that would be very nice. We should actually do that one day. So you have Rav there do Ravel, Bolero, Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet. Yes, yeah, so we mm -hmm. have another, another highlight in the sense is that we, since two, three years also, we kind of decided, well, why shouldn't we ignore the main holidays or yearly um, annual events, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have the, the Messiah coming again and again very successfully. Mm -hmm. And for Valentine's Day, we also try to program now something that, well, when you want your either blind, first blind date <laughs> or after you want to go back to the <laughs> symphony with your um, spouse in 70 years, mm -hmm. why not do that and to have a beautiful program? Mm -hmm. So um, we tailored something, you write with uh, Romeo and Juliet and um, for Valentine's Day 2015 and Ravel's Bolero, which is one of the maybe top 10. You might know this now, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> top 10. <laughs> top 10 ever written. Yeah. And the conductor actually is a uh, Russian gentleman, Daniel Reiskin from Europe, who will infuse that whole evening with lots of passion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also wanted to bring a, a couple uh, we, we were talking about a little bit earlier. The Arditi Quartet and uh, Vikinger Olofsson as well are two. Uh, Arditi Quartet, the String Quartet, people may or may not be familiar with. They've been around for years. In fact, I think they're celebrating their uh, 40 years this March. Um, and Vikinger Olofsson, of course, who's a incredible pianist, uh, Icelandic pianist. Yeah. So just talk about them uh, Briefly, quickly. Yeah. And so then, yeah. again, it's like for me, I'm glad you put this to the highlights. <laughs> glad not to the <laughs> well, hidden these are, gems. I guess, I guess we're kind of crossing over into the <laughs> hidden gems at the same time. So right. let's just... Ju well, it depends with whom you talk because you're I right. Suppose. I mean, with Aditi, it's a little bit like with Kronos Quartet. When we had Kronos here four years ago, I mean, there are the rock stars of the mm -hmm. <laughs> of their genre, you the know, modern it's, modern quartet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and but Aditi now, um, <clears throat> as um, Kronos are the rock stars. Aditi are the 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 emperors or the high nobility from mm -hmm. Europe. <coughs> Excuse me, because in a way, Aditi. I don't know, since uh, what you mentioned, it's 40 years. They are so famous mm -hmm. in their genre that we have them here is very, very bi a big deal, you know, and they're coming. Well, and they've had many, many pieces like written, ex <coughs> you know, exclusively for, for them. For them, and right? they are notorious yeah. also for <laughs> being, how do I put this, difficult to really want, knowing what they want because mm -hmm. they're doing it on such a very sophisticated, high professional level. So um, we will be fine, <laughs> but I'm also a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, <laughs> to have them that's here. good. That's good. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keeps you on your toes. <laughs> Keeps us on the toes. So this will be in February um, mm -hmm. for the new music festival, but definitely something, mm -hmm. a big one to look forward to. And the other big thing that you're featuring is, is um, Nordic. It's a no sort of part of the Nordic festival, which which ties us into a couple things. First of all, the uh, Vikinger Olofsson, you were mentioning the Icelandic pianist who, yeah. who uh, tell me a little bit about him and, and what we can expect from his. Well, I mean, so from in the Icelandic scene, there are several very well-known uh, soloists or conductors, you know, and in this case now, um, also what's interesting that this country has like 360,000 people and it seems everybody is like a star or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in this case now, mm -hmm. Viking Olafsson mm -hmm. is, um, he tours the world. He's it's this fantastic pianist and he opened their new concert hall, Harpa, 
three years ago, which um, if you follow this was quite um, a story, uh, as you might know, the whole financial crisis mm -hmm. started in Iceland in 2007, 2008, and when the, the, the country went bankrupt. And um, because of several of their famous banks completely outgambled themselves and um, pulled the entire economy and the, and the government with them. But being Iceland and really visionary a hub of cultural and hub of culture arts, yeah. yeah during that time i mean their concert hall was like half finished and they um which was like a 240 million dollar tap price tag was on the 220 mm -hmm. million dollars and they decided ah, <laughs> what the heck you yeah, know let's put our we'll, rest of our we'll resources into the, <laughs> the last whatever pennies <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Instead of digging us out of bankruptcy, we'll just put it in the concert hall. And that's what they did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they and, yeah. opened this fantastic place. And I'm just saying this, telling the story because Vikingor Olofsson then opened uh, that concert hall. Um, with Vladimir with Ashkenazi conducting. Which Vladimir is Ashkenazi conducting. Huge conducted. for them. Yeah. 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 Huge. So um, and we'll, we'll talk just a bit more about him because we're going to queue up the piece that he yeah. performed at that festival. So the Nordic the Nordic theme, you'll be doing music by Sibelius, uh, the Finlandia and different symphonies of Sibelius as well. So there's uh, um, last year, wh wh what was the uh, theme this year was again, reminded me? Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, well, we had the Tchaikovsky Festival. So next year, 2014, 2015 is going to be the Nordic theme yeah. running through. Yeah, so we kind of thought, I mean, first yeah. of all, it's fun to have a angle where you can dig into a little bit and where we can connect with other arts organizations mm -hmm. as we did in the Tchaikovsky Festival. So in this time, I thought, gosh, we have such a big Icelandic population in, well, Gimli in Manitoba, and um, why not build on that? Mm -hmm. And then there are there was a couple of couple of pieces that I really wanted to perform, and um, one of them is this Nielsen Symphony Number no. Four, the inextinguishable. That's all right, inextinguishable. <laughs> so we thought, gosh, okay, it's how can life. we put yeah. this together? Mm -hmm. And there are five official. <clears throat> Um, how do you call those? Scandinavian countries, I guess. Mm -hmm. the, and Denmark, um, then Finland, uh, Sweden, and Norway, and of course, Iceland. Those five belong somewhat together. That was our geography lesson for the morning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we picked a composer from each of those um, mm -hmm. countries. And out there, if you can think of, if you, I mean, just test yourself if you would know a composer from each one, composer of Norway, you know, and well, we almost said it already. Mm -hmm. Norway, uh, uh, composer of, of, of Finland, of course, Denmark, who is of Denmark? Well, I just mentioned it. Anyway, so let's go through them quickly. Danish is Nielsen, mm -hmm. um, and who wrote really very romantic music and I always wanted to do his fourth symphony and now you have a chance to hear it. It is fairly, for a fairly big orchestra. It's a booming the piece. <coughs> booming piece. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you said you played it last week? Uh, last week I think I played the what whole... What was uh, your impression? What do you think? Oh, it's it's a very vibrant, um, passionate, I think, piece. That yeah. just, it's, uh, well, it basically describes life. And it's about life's, the turmoil, the ups and downs, yeah. the, the good, the bad, and it ends in, and I guess what Nielsen was, he quotes, life is in, inextinguishable, right. meaning that life will go on and life will, per, you know, will right. persevere. So mm -hmm. we'll have that piece here. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, yes, yeah, one of my highlights for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Hidden Gem. Um, then let's go to Norway. Well, Norway um, created, or Greek Edward Grieg comes out of Norway and we are performing his at, um, uh, piano concerto, which we will hear a little bit later in the hour with Vikinger performing. Um, now, Sweden. If you look in our program book, you will not see a Swedish composer, but we will have for both um, uh, weekends a Swedish dessert. We will okay. perform, <laughs> <laughs> not like when you go to Ikea, you know, you can have your Swedish desserts there. Mm -hmm. No, we have, will have um, actually an encore, different encores from uh, from different Swedish composers. So mm. this will be a little surprise. Mm -hmm. um, then Iceland. Well, Iceland has a young history of composers, but a very rich one. So, and here then we go into um, two, two and a half years ago, we had on our new music festival, the very famous composer or from the very famous band, Sigur Ros, mm -hmm. 
Kjartan Swainson uh, wrote a tremendously heavenly, um, ethereal, transcending piece of music, Credo, uh, for chorus and orchestra, 20 minutes, very simple, but very deep and uplifting. So we'll perform this again. And then we have a very special angle. As you might all know, it's this year the 125th anniversary of the Icelandic festival in Gimli. So um, we opened, the, we kicked off the festival three weeks ago um, doing our new music festival. And we will close the festival during the Nordic festival now in, in October. And which means that uh, uh, there is a new work by a composer who lives in Gimli, uh, who is Icelandic from descent, but is Manitoban. Um, Christoph, um, I'm sorry, I have to actually uh, look it up. It's Kendi Christofferson. He is made a, somewhat a name. He wrote music for video games or for, um, for, for um, iPhone games, you know. Um, but is somebody who is very uh, contemporary in his thinking of, or 21st century. But the music is, you, you will fall in love with music immediately. Mm -hmm. it's, it is very, um, well, just again, it's, like, it's a romantic feel, but Icelandic in the sense of, again, it's like there's a certain openness to s like space and um, something spiritual, I feel always, with, with music from Iceland. So we will premiere this work. And um, and mm -hmm. then so th those are the four in a way, and then uh, we highlight a little bit more than uh, Sibelius, Finnish composer, mm -hmm. with three works of his Finlandia, his um, violin concerto performed by uh, the concertmaster of the Icelandic symphony. Um, her name is uh, Sigrun Edvaldsdottir. I hope I pronounced this correctly. <laughs> and um, then we do his uh, Sib Sibelius seventh. Symphony and for you out there, it, there are a couple of, I mean, personally, maybe a handful of the ultimate mysterious works in the classical hist in the classical repertoire, where you kind of, I don't know, you kind of want to dig in, or do you think there? I mean, there it's like the Sphinx of the classical repertoire and Sibelius Seventh Symphony is right at the top there. Mm -hmm. So um, we will perform it. And it's one of the, the top, one of the top pieces on the wish list of our musicians, um, <clears throat> of myself. And uh, it's not a long work, it's maybe 22 or 23 minutes. But um, yeah, come so Listen there you to have it. it. It's, in, uh, in the, and yeah. then those are just very brief. Uh, it's very a brief idea of what is in store for next year. You can check out. Go on to their website wso.mb.ca. Uh, click over to the 2014-2015 season guide. You'll get a description of everything. Um, again, Alexander. Before we uh, we say bye, I'm just going to get him to cue up the next piece here. We were talking about this is uh, from the Grieg's Piano Concerto that will be uh, performed next year. Um, it, it isn't the performer that will be here next year, but it's still going to be the same same performance. So just mention very briefly what we're going to be listening to now. So yeah, I mean, there's um, in the in the piano world. I mean, there I always mention there's the the Mount Everest of like the big ones, you know. And I think the Greek piano concerto is maybe the most. I mean, right? Yeah, you you'll know from the opening you, you hear it when you immediately. hear immediately. Yeah. <laughs> you mm. know it. Everybody yeah. knows it. You know, and Vikingo Olafsson. Um, who's going to perform it here, has this whole Nordic angle. So I'm glad to combine those worlds, you know, Iceland and and, and, uh, and um, mm. Norway. And in a funny sense, he, <laughs> Vikinger, I mean, he has the name, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> because the Vikingers Vikings. came from Norway mm -hmm. to, well, to Iceland. Mm -hmm. So he con connects the, <laughs> the piano concerto <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Little did a, he know. In a funny <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander, thank you very much for coming by this morning. Again, uh, wso.mb.ca if you want to check out more about the season coming up. Um, we'll definitely be in touch more, I'm sure, Absolutely. as the season, season unfolds. So here we have Grieg's Piano Concerto in A minor. <laughs> 